My name is Staff Sergeant Javon Smith, and you're watching The Force. Last week, our country witnessed the inauguration of our 45th President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. The peaceful transfer of power that has occurred on every U.S. Inauguration Day is a hallmark of our country's democracy. In the spirit of this day, let's take a look at how 3,500 Army and Air National Guard troops became police officers for a day to work the inauguration. I'm excited, kind of nervous. Um, I know it's going to be a lot of people and a lot of uh, commotion going around, but I'm just ready to do my job. I've wanted to be in the military since I was seven, you know, so it feels pretty good to be able to like be near a president, you know, to help defend him and assist him in ways that I need to because I've been thinking about this for a very long time. The additional help the Army and Air National Guard provided during the inauguration played a large part in maintaining order and safety during the event. Maintaining a technological edge in defense requires the best and the brightest minds for research and development. In this next piece from Blue, we look at some of the innovative minds working to make the Air Force better, stronger, and more efficient. The Air Force particularly recognized the need for future talent in the areas of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, also known as STEM. That's why they started focusing on ways to get kids interested in these fields early. Starbase is a Department of Defense program geared towards getting kids excited in STEM, aviation, and aerospace. Uh, we target fifth grade students here. We do several lessons. Uh, we do Egbert, which is where we put an egg in a cockpit of a shuttle. Whoa! Launch it from the ceiling down with, with an actual egg, to, and you have to protect it in the cockpit. So students get to work on that. They get to work on computer aid design. They get to work on rocketry, Newton's Law, um, and several other great hands-on and exciting uh, STEM activities. To find out more about STEM and some of the other great work the Air Force is doing, open your web browser and head to airman.dodlive.mil. Get the latest service headlines from around the Air Force. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at AFTV Radio for new reports every Tuesday and Friday. Around the Air Force, from Europe to the Pacific to the USA, we've got you covered. Okay, the standing for target rolling up and it'll fire just after it gets up on top. <laughs> Close the distance, gain a dominant position, and finish the fight. The number one goal of combatives is to strengthen the Army's core of soldiers and teach them how to close with the enemy and eventually come out on top. It builds my confidence, you know, inside the cage and outside, like, because I, I know I can handle myself. We're training warriors. We're living up to the warrior ethos that we talk about in our creeds, and uh, we're passing that on through physical and mental toughness. There's always been a misconception about combatives being a sport. Combatives is not a sport. Army combatives, the modern Army combatives program is not for sport. It's through competition that we learn the lessons that we need to learn, what works for us and our body types. It is a vital and crucial element to a soldier's success in the field. I've deployed myself and I've had to use my hands overseas. The fact that I knew I could gave me the confidence to know that I knew exactly what I needed to do. I think that every soldier needs that. And it just adds to what a soldier is. Giving someone a reason to push themselves, to train, to be the best person they can be, that's what the tournaments do. A competition like this provides that realistic training without the risk of losing a life, losing a limb, or getting seriously injured. Because our goal of the tournament is to make sure that everybody gets that training and then is able to go to work tomorrow. Yeah, it is an acknowledgement of their hard work, their, their effort that they put into it. It's an acknowledgement of the training that they've received uh, throughout that time. Whereas in 
a regular training environment, a regular class, it's just training. Right? Yeah, you have to exert yourself a little bit, but it's just training. Enlisting in the military is one of the most honorable ways to serve your country there is, and everyone who chooses this path has a different reason for doing so. Next, we introduce you to Maria Dama. She was born in a Russian prison and brought to New York at the age of four when she was adopted. Years later, she enlisted in the Marine Corps. Here is her story. News, photos, videos, Marine Corps orders and directives, and Marine Corps social media content is fed directly from Marines.mil and Divids to the app, Marines Mobile, the official app of the Corps. To learn about other interesting stories, head to Marines.mil. That does it for this edition of The Force. Check out previous episodes by going to DefenseTV.com or downloading the Defense TV app. My name is Staff Sergeant Javon Smith. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you on the next edition of The Force.